re ask questions, you know, so they can edit. Those paintings are something. I don't think I want to take those home with me. Yes. All right, let's go. Uh, no, no, we do that later. Okay. Well, Marcia, it's very nice to have a chance to talk with you again. The last time was the goodbye girl. Yes. And that was wonderful, but uh, this one is something else. I really and truly think come Academy Award night, I know you're going to be there, and I'm hoping you're the one who walks oh. up there. <laughs> well, thank you very much. That's really nice. Thank you. I'm Do you allow you yourself to think about that? No. No, I don't. It's I just don't. I mean, you do because you've just said it, and it's wonderful to hear. But I mean, I uh, I don't allow myself to think a great deal about it. No, I think it would be wrong to spend my energy doing that. Three times nominated. Uh huh. After each time, what? How would you feel the first time you lose? And and I don't like even like to use that word lose. Somebody else won. Let's yes, put it yes. that way. <laughs> um, but it. Uh, did it take you a while to get over those disappointments? Um, no, because the first time, uh, I just thought it was, I mean, I was so surprised. And, I mean, it was only my second time doing a movie, and I didn't even really think about it. And so it was really terrific because we came out to actually be on the Academy Awards. And, I mean, I was like, a, I mean, I just thought it was all this, like, sort of fairy tale come true kind of thing. And so that was a lot of fun. And the second time uh, with The Goodbye Girl, um, I was very excited for Richard, and, and it was okay because by that time I understood, you know, the whole process, and I thought it was just terrific that the uh, actors had nominated me. And then the third time, uh, the hardest part was literally going and having to face that moment, you know, when you're all on the screen together right before they make the announcement because you, you're denied your feelings at that moment. I have no idea to this day how I really feel at that moment because you just sort of go numb with this kind of peculiar feeling that all these people are looking at you and it's 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 such a strange and unlikely and almost inhuman way to have to contend with something like that I guess this role has a lot of humor to it but it is a very heavy role in many many ways do you consider this your best role well I think it's my best role in the sense of the complexity of the character as it's portrayed on the screen I mean uh, in Neil's writing of that character and the development of her, I mean, there are so many facets of her personality that I have an opportunity to explore and express. And it's not often that you get to play such a full-blown, complex personality like that. Marcia, have you ever known anyone uh, or had anyone close to you that had the problem of alcoholism? Not immediately, other than people who drink too much and don't know what they're doing when they're drinking because they think they're having a wonderful time and they don't know that maybe they're being rude or they don't know that they're embarrassing other people or they don't know that they're presenting themselves in a less than attractive manner. Uh, but I've never had to personally contend with a, a relation or a loved one who is truly addicted to it and has that problem. In this movie, you have the scene where you go off the wagon, and literally the night I saw it, people were saying, no, don't. <laughs> yes, I know that it's a wonderful moment when I went to the first screening that had an audience and that happened. I really felt very good about that because it meant that the people were really uh, involved with Georgia and uh, cared enough about her not to want her to do that. And uh, what I also thought was important, too, was that... Uh, People got angry at her for drinking, and I thought that was very good because it's right. Do you think if there was someone close to you that you would be able to have the confrontation with them that Toby has with you and Christy, your daughter, has? Do you think you'd be able to bring yourself up to that? I would hope so uh, because I think it's an incredibly wonderful way to show how much you love somebody. Um, I personally sometimes have had difficulty with confrontations, not on that level, I mean, where you, you're trying to shake somebody to do better. But I think I would. I think I could uh, 
that I would if I cared enough about them. Um, I think if you don't care, then you tend not to want to get involved. There's another wonderful, well, there's so many wonderful moments in the movie, but one that I got such a kick out of, you and Jimmy Coco, and you're such very dear, close friends, without being romantically involved. And um, and you play this little game of, of who you wanted to be. Uh-huh. And he wanted to be Audrey Hepburn and have a long neck. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> right. Did you ever, as a, a younger person, Marsha, play that, uh, especially when you were getting into acting, say, oh, gee, I'd like to be, or... Yes, I had a big fantasy trip for Italian actresses like Anna Mignani and Sophia Loren and, uh, well, European actresses in general, uh, Ingrid Bergman. I mean, there were a lot of ladies who, and they tended to be, for some reason or another, uh, either Mediterranean, you know, or Zoftic. I mean, somehow I just love that sort of full-blown Mother Earth kind of sexy, uh, volatile, interesting kind of woman more than, let's say, more aesthetic or, you know, surreal or, you know, kind of person. But for some reason, that's what I got sort of hooked up into for a while there. And how did you get over it? Well, I did never, because I always appreciated the work of all those women. I really liked them as actresses. Uh, and then, you know, eventually it's just you become, you just admire them. It's no longer a question of wanting to be them because I don't want to be myself. Uh, I'd love it. Another thing, too, is that in a way, Jimmy and, and Georgia in the play are people who don't feel comfortable about themselves at this particular moment in the film. I mean, they don't like themselves all that well. So I think that sometimes that game, you do think about that game when you don't have a good sense about yourself or when you don't have self-esteem. But, you know, I, I feel good about myself, so I don't tend to have that same sort of relationship to that game anymore. Marcia, um, Neil's daughters have been very close to you, and um, uh, as you and Christy were working on this part, did you ever draw from any of the relationship you have with Neil's daughters uh, it, and put it into the relationship between you and Christy? Well, I think that, uh, yes, you t I try, and also I think because of Neil's relationships to his daughters, he writes with the understanding of what it's like to have those conversations. And I've seen it, you know, so I, I, I can in sort of imbibe it, you know, by having observed him with them and, and then my, uh, my relationship to both girls, too. And then also there's the element about how I would have liked to have been talked to by a parent. Did, uh, or do, uh, Neil's daughters, do, do they ever kind of use you as, you know, uh, sort of the, the, the path to their father, something that maybe they'd talk to you about and try to get you to talk to their father or, or influence his his decision if they're not sure how he'll react well i think maybe sometimes they talk to me about things and get my my feedback but i don't remember like specific instances because both girls seem to have uh, a good uh, basically a very very good communi verbal communication with their father there was never a question that they couldn't talk to him it just seems to me that since I've known them, Ellen was always very verbal with her father. I mean, they could fight together. They could yell and scream at one another. And I loved it because I was raised at a time when children were to be seen and not heard, and you could never get angry at a parent. And I liked that Neil encouraged the children to share their feelings, including their anger. And so um, I don't think they really needed me to do that, you know. Uh, I mean, there were some private things that they might want to talk to me about that they didn't want to tell him necessarily, but it didn't mean that they didn't want him to know about it, knowing that eventually I would probably tell them, you know, their dad, but it might have been of a more intimate nature or... Girl talk. Yes, girl talk kind yeah. of thing, yeah. Well, Marcia, again, pleasure having a chance to see you, and oh, especially well, under you. these circumstances. And come Academy Award night, I'm going to be looking for you with my fingers crossed. Oh, well, thanks very much. That's thanks, nice. Marcia. You're welcome. Thank you. It's got to be your year. It's got to be your year. Would be nice. You know, when it, when Meryl Streep got it, I kept saying on the air, it's got to be her year. It's got to <laughs> be her year. <laughs> She's lost too many points. Oh, that's nice. And I hate that word, love. Oh, let's see. What it is. All right. How's that? That's super. What are you going to do right. now? You I'm just going to give you uh, some reaction shots first. Okay, about there. Uh, or. Okay. Is there going to be sound on this? Yes, there will be sound. 
Okay, the eye level is good about there? Yes, the eye okay. level is very good. And if you look at the bottom of the picture, it's slightly darker. It's a little more, mm -hmm. a little more to the uh, left. There? Uh, yeah, a little down. Three. Yeah. Okay, questions. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think you need to uh, on this. Okay. Marsha, you have three Academy nominations. Three times you went there and you didn't come home with the Oscar. What kinds of feelings would you have at, at those times? Do you consider this your very best role? There are so many marvelous moments in this movie. One, I remember uh, you and Jimmy Coco are talking about who you would like to be, and he said he always wanted to be Audrey Hepburn and have a neck. When you were a younger actress, were, were there some people that you wanted to be? And how did you get over that? In the scenes where you are having confrontations with Christy, who plays your daughter, did you ever relate to your own daughters, really Neil's daughters, but your stepdaughters, did, did you use that in getting these scenes together? Has there ever been anyone close to you or someone you've loved a great deal who had a problem with alcoholism? Do you think if there were someone close to you who had a problem with alcoholism, you'd be able to have the kind of intense confrontation that uh, we see in this film? Does anybody think of anything else? There was something what, right at the very end. You could also always ask a why or a what. Oh. Okay. All right. Uh, let me just wrap it up then. Well, Marcia, come Academy Award night, I'm going to be looking for you to go up there on that stage. This has got to be your year. Thanks, Marcia, very much. Okay. You should do it. Do you smoke in real life? No. Was that difficult? Because you have the most convincing.